Time for our cash tag segment. For that, let's bring in Megan Brantley. She's the vice president of research at Likefolio. Welcome back to the show, Megan. Thanks for having me, guys. All right, so we got a great topic, a great stock to talk about here, Netflix. A uh, pretty volatile one. We have pulled back pretty significantly, Megan, uh, from 52-week highs above 480 bucks a share. And I'm not sure if this is because of the strike. Maybe there's not new content coming out. Maybe it's the overall market. But what kind of data are you guys seeing? Because I'll tell you, they keep on saying that there's new, there's no new content out there. But if you go on Netflix, there's always something out there, right? I mean, they, they've got so much content. <laughs> They don't need to probably produce anything for three months out of the year. Yeah, you know, I don't know about you, but I've yet to run out of content on Netflix if I really needed Not something to watch. And it seems to be pretty high quality. But overall, I think that there's a lot of uncertainty surrounding Netflix. You know, the company is undergoing a lot of changes right now. There are talks of it raising its prices. It's gone through a password sharing crackdown. It's created new ad tier models. So its whole pricing structure has kind of flipped. And now it no longer really reports on those subscriber growth numbers. So. I think that this leaves a little bit of a foggy situation. And whenever we look at Netflix, um, at least in our data, we have a little bit of a muted signal whenever we're looking at Netflix. We can see some momentum. I think that, you know, mentions just of late are up by about 3%. But whenever you're looking at growth, we're really seeing growth in streamers that are offering live content and live sports. And that's not really Netflix's niche. But whenever you consider overall consumer mind share, Netflix Netflix is the monster, right? This is the largest player in streaming. It it commands nearly half of all streaming mentions in our universe. Um, obviously, this is a very crowded market to be in, but Netflix is still the largest player, at least as far as we're concerned. And so we think that, you know, whenever it comes down to it, this is probably one of the last names that consumers are going to drop. However, we do see some signs that that growth is slowing down. And so I think that there are some reasons just to be cautious heading into this report. Megan, their, their competitors seem to be ready or currently raising prices, which probably gives yeah. Netflix the cover to raise prices in the future. They, they, they've got this now page sharing. After the crackdown on passwords, if you want to pay $7.99 a month, you can share with someone out of your household. Mm -hmm. but. Megan, they seem to be, they are an advantage when, I have trouble saying this, when the strike seems to be helping them. And it's why is it's because they can take legacy TV shows, like the latest one is Suits, right? That you could have watched yeah. all the time, but when you can watch it on appointment, it's different. And Suits has got a resurgence now on Netflix because you can watch it when you want to, not when some network plans the show. Yeah, I think that that's a great point. And this is an area where Netflix can really flex just because of this content that it can offer consumers. Um, one area that we can look that we haven't touched on yet is consumer sentiment. And a lot of times this consumer sentiment levels is our good long-term gauge. And for us, Netflix is pretty flat. It's down by one point year over year, around 65% positive. This is pretty much in line with other streamers. This is pretty pretty good considering the massive mind share that Netflix commands. You know, it has a much higher mention volume than a lot of its peers. So a lot more opportunities for consumers to be, you know, talking negatively or positively about the service. But especially considering the changes that consumers have gone through with Netflix, including, you know, that password crackdown. And then, you know, after they cracked down on passwords, they removed that lower pricing ad supported tier. So they kind of turned up the volume, twisted the knife a little bit on consumers. But, you know, that could be positive for investors if they can continue to get, you know, more revenue per, per consumer. I will say something in our data that we've seen, we haven't necessarily seen a huge significant uptick in talks about new subscribers, but we have seen an uptick in people who are talking about, you know, how much does it cost to just add on a member like you talked about. Mm -hmm. And so I think that there could be some nods to that of where a lot of people are saying, okay, fine, you know, here's $8, I'll add an extra member onto my account so that I can pass word share but um, I think that just long term it is a positive indicator and supports the concept of pricing power for Netflix that amid all of these changes sentiment was only hit by one point.
Megan, with um, you know all the competition in this space, it seems like some of them have fallen back a little bit. Disney's pulling back on a lot of their content creation. Warner Brothers uh, Discovery uh, has been under pressure. I don't know how Max is doing. I think uh, sentiment's probably pretty positive on that. But you know, being first to the market here in Netflix, all the content that they already have on there. I do think, I do agree with you, live sports is probably a detriment that, to them in the long term, but when you look at like an earning score on a, on a stock yeah. like this, which is a leader, you've seen the pullback and the average revenue per user continues to move higher. Is that, you know, give you some solace that, hey, maybe they could surprise because maybe they're not spending money on content right now because of the strike? Yeah, I think that that's definitely a potential positive point for Netflix. I think another thing that could be re received really well is if they, you know, raise prices or announce that they're raising prices, that will be really well received. Um, we don't know that yet. We can just base off what our data suggests. We do see a bit of a pullback in that growth. And so because of that, we're a little bit cautious heading into this report. Our score trends just a little bit bearish, but this is one of those names where we see some long-term um, tailwinds developing. We think that if anything, the maturation of um, AI can only help Netflix in terms of content creation and also just content curation for users, you know, serving up shows and making recommendations better um, to improve the overall user experience. So, so there are some definite long term tailwinds. If we do see a pullback in this name, I think this is one that we would, you know, pick up shares at a lower price. All right. Great stuff. Great data. As always, Megan, appreciate it. Have a great day. Thanks, guys. You too. All right. That's Megan Brantley, Vice President of Research at Likefolio, breaking down the data for us on Netflix.